The pain was worse than birth pains. By the time I got to the emergency room, I thought I may be having a heart attack. I just wanted to die. Patient highly agitated, sweating, red eyes, potential opioid user. I told the nurse, this is my first time in the emergency room, even though I had been seeing my doctor for over six months for this horrible pain. She asked me a lot of questions, the same health questions that my doctor had asked me. I told her, I'm a very healthy person. I've never even used my insurance until this pain began. All over again, I told her, the pain began at the top of my stomach and that I thought it was indigestion, even though in my life I had never experienced any problems with my stomach or my digestive system. I told her that I had tried everything. I had changed my diet. I had taken the Prilosec that the doctor had prescribed, but nothing was working. I told her that the doctor told me that my symptoms would get better once I lost weight. <laughs> well, by that time, I had lost so much weight because I was afraid to eat or drink anything. The pain was just getting worse. No signs of heart irregularities detected, referred back to the primary doctor. She kept on typing, and I don't think she really understand it stood me or what I was trying to say. She told me there wasn't anything wrong with my heart and then I should go back to my doctor. By the time I got to my doctor's appointment, I was throwing up vial and I was throwing up the Prilosec that the doctor had prescribed for me. I told him this and I told him what had happened in the emergency room and that the pain had traveled up to my chest and in my upper back. After a few minutes of examining me, he told me he was going to give me heart medication. I told him, there is no history of heart disease in my family. Isn't there some test we can order? He simply said, take the medication. I think it will help. I've been a doctor for many years, and I recognize these symptoms. Take the medication for a few weeks, and if there is no improvement, we'll reassess at that time. One day, after work, when I saw a friend of mine, who I hadn't seen for a while, she asked me, is everything okay? Because she could see I was skinny and pale and I had sunken eyes. I told her I was at the end of my rope. I shared with her all of my symptoms and everything that I had been through. And I could see that she was just horrified. But then, all of a sudden, she says to me, Nuria, I had the same problem. You have a gallbladder problem. Go to Tijuana, find a doctor that will give you an x-ray or an ultrasound, and you'll see. I bet you anything you have gallstones. I was so desperate, the next day my husband drove me to Tijuana. My friend was right. After an ultrasound that only took no more than 30 minutes, the doctor was able to confirm. The doctor told me I needed to take my results immediately to my U.S. doctor because I needed surgery. He was also confused and asked why I didn't have a diagnosis earlier because this is a very common surgery. When I got back to the U.S., my doctor was speechless. My husband really laid into him and told him he was a quack. The doctor apologized and ordered a sonogram of his own, and of course it confirmed the diagnosis. Within a week, I had surgery. As I look back, I feel so much disappointment and sadness. How could this happen in the U.S. with all of our medical advances, and especially if we have insurance? I repeatedly asked the doctor and the nurse in the emergency room if there were any tests they could perform on me. Each time, I was made to feel like I was crossing the line because I was questioning their professional opinions. How is this possible? I just don't want this to happen to anyone else. The National Healthcare Disparities Report has shown that healthcare is significantly better for white patients than for patients of color, black American, Hispanic, American Indian, and Asian. 
with healthcare providers spending longer time and showing greater willingness to collaborate with white patients as part of intake and treatment protocols. If you would like to help identify creative solutions to this challenge, consider participating in a future healthcare problem-solving hackathon.